students welcome to today's lecture in today's lecture i am going to discuss about euler's torsion function okay euler's torsion function one must know before to study uh, euler's theorem and rsa algorithm in the modular arithmetic okay euler's torsion function is what it is a function it is denoted by phi it is very important in number theoretic function having a deep relationship with the prime numbers okay the torsion phi of n it is denoted by phi of n okay positive integers less than n that are co prime to n means for phi of n is what it is a positive integer of a uh, n n should be positive integer we should not consider zero or less than zero means negative values n must be positive to find the torsion function and to find the torsion function of any number positive integer less than n that are co prime to n so we have to consider if you want to find a number torsion of n then we have to check how many co primes are there which are less than n okay so phi of n torsion function of one is always one here you come to know by some examples okay now i have given a table now it's a n it is n phi of n numbers co prime to n here just check 1 phi of 1 n is 1 co prime is 1 itself and here n is 2 1 is phi of n is that's a torsion function of 2 is 1 and numbers co prime to n are 1 only For three, n three, quotient of n is two. Quotient of three means what? The numbers which are co prime to three. Understood? How many numbers are there which are co prime to three? That is given as two. Okay. For example, let's explain this. What do you mean by this? Phi of three means what? Numbers less than three are what? One and two. Okay, the less than three. Now, whether these two are relatively prime uh, means what? With three, GCD of one three is one. GCD of two three is one. S. Yes. Therefore, they satisfy the condition. They are relatively prime with three. Therefore. Phi of three can be written as two. Understood? Similarly for four, numbers less than four, one, two, three. Okay, now we have to check GCD of one and four. Whether it is one, s. Yes. GCD of two and four, it is two. GCD of three and four, it is one. Now, one and four relatively prime. Okay, two and four they are not relatively prime. Three and four relatively prime. What it gives? How many? Then phi of four is what? Phi of four is two. Okay, there are two prime numbers, uh, co primes to four. This is what torsion function. Understood? Torsion function of any number n is what? The numbers less than n which are relatively prime to phi. Okay. This is how calculate the functions. Now, when you observe this table, when you observe this table, so for two, two is a prime number. Torsion function is one. Three is a prime number. Torsion function is two. Five is prime. Torsion function is four. Seven is prime. Torsion function is six. Means what? Whenever n is a prime number, two, three, five, seven, so on. Phi of n. Torsion function is n minus one. Less than. Okay. But how about the composite numbers? You may also have noticed that here, for example, five. For five. Phi you can be, so it is not phi. It is a fifteen. Fifteen can be here. It is a fifteen. Fifteen can be expressed as three into phi. Okay. So fifteen. It is fifteen. Fifteen can be expressed as product of two primes, three into phi. Then phi of fifteen. Torsion function of fifteen is 
phi of 3 and phi of 5. Okay. Phi of 3 is phi of 3 is 2. Phi of 5 is phi of 5 is 4. So 2 into 4, 8. So we have got 8 here. But it is not proof for all composite number. Okay. It will not hold good for all composite numbers. For example, 14, 12, and 10. Just you can observe. Uh, for, and uh, however, it does not. Uh, it is 12, uh, true for 14, 12, and 10 here. 14, 12, and 10. Also, it is good. Same. Uh, you can express them in five prime factors. Then product of the quotient functions is same. But for 4, 8, 9. 4, 8, 9 are all composite functions. Yes, 4, 4. It can be expressed as 2 into 2. Yes, but torsion number of 2 is what? 1. Okay, but what we have got a 1 into 1, you should get 1, uh, 2, but it you will get it as 1. Similarly, for 8, for 8, 8 can be expressed as 2 into 2 into 2. Then you will get 1 only. But for 8, you have get, uh, you got it as 4. Okay. Similarly, for 9. 9 can be expressed as 3 into 3. Totient of 3 is 2. 2 into 2 you should get 4. But here you have 6. Understood? So for all composite numbers it is not true. This one is not true. But this is true when n is prime. Okay? But we can't express all composite numbers. Uh, we, if you express all composite number in, uh, in terms of prime factorization then totient, product of the totient is always not same. Equal to totient of the given number. Okay? In such case, we are going to use another one formula. Yeah. Make the same relationship. Okay. In such case, if M and N are co-primes, then this holds good. Okay. This one. That is uh, here what we did here. Phi of 3 into phi of 5. This is the formula. If M and N are co-primes, then you can use this. In some case, the general formula to compute phi of N. Is what if the prime factorization of n is given by n equal to p1 e raised to 1 p1 up to pn uh, p1 into e raised e raised to e into p2 e, uh, e raised to 2 so on up to pn e raised to n in such case phi of n is n into 1 minus 1 by pn into 1 minus 1 by p2 so on or else you can say phi of mn is phi of m into phi of n into 1 minus 1 by m into 1 minus 1 by n. Okay, whatever factors you are taken, you have to use this formula to find the totient number of any number. You can, they may be per, per prime numbers, they may be composite number. For any number, you can use this formula to find the totient function. Okay. Now, for example, we see some examples. Now, here, example 9 equal to 3 square. Phi of 9, totient function of 9 is what? 9 into 1 minus 1 by 3, that is equal to 6. Means what? Your 9 is a composite number here. Okay. It is a composite number. Go, so you can express it in terms of 2 primes, 3 into 3. But we can, uh, the numbers, when you count it from 1 to 8, number less than 9 means 1 to 8. How many numbers are co primes to 9? That we have to count. Okay. So, uh, as I said, all composite numbers can't be expressed as uh, uh, prime factors. But if, even though they are expressed as a prime factors, then also totient number is not same. So in such case, we have to use that formula, previous formula. That is the main number that is 9 into 1 minus 1 by 3. That is the prime factor. What is the factor you are going to use? Prime factorization that, that is equal to 9 into 2 by 3. So it is 3 into 3. So it is, that's why it is 6. Similarly, 4. 4 is also a composite number. It is expressed at 2 square. So, 5 of 4 is 4 into 1 minus 1 by 2. That is 2. Similarly, 15. 15 is also a composite number. It can be expressed as 3 into 5. 2 prime factors. But 5 of 3 and 5 of 5, you can take. Or else, it is, the uh, according to formula, the number, that is 15, into 1 minus 1 by 3, this is m. If this is n, then 15 into phi of mn into 1 minus 1 by m, 1 minus 1 by n, that form. Okay. So, when you simplify it, you will get it as 8. So, quotient number of, quotient of 15 is 8. 
that is the numbers relatively prime to 15 are 8. Okay. Now calculate 5 of 7, total number of 7. So total number of 7 is number of numbers less than 7 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Since these are all relatively prime with 7, no, they are not uh, common divisor, they do not have any common divisor with 7. So automatically 6 is the total number of 7. Next is now calculate phi of 100. This total number of 100. Okay. As 100 is a larger number, it is time consuming to calculate from 1 to 100. You can't calculate all the numbers 1 to 99. You can't keep going on checking which are relatively prime to with 100 up to 1 to 99. Okay. In such case, uh, what we have to do? We have to use the formula. 100 do bigger number area, bigger number numbers less than 100 have 1 uh, n minus 1 under 100 total up to 99. 99 numbers go now compare Marconta Kodaka means uh, relatively prime. Ida will have to GCD 1 it no in and So in such case, now in Marbeku formula use Marbeke no 5 of 100 do 5 of m into 5 of n 1 minus 1 uh, 1 1 minus 1 by m into 1 minus 1 by n type and the you know, you can express 100 as 2 square into 5 square. And you know, 2 square into 5 square. And you know, you can express it as I am taking m, 5 of m as 2 square. 5 of m is 2 square. And you know, 4 is 4. 5 of n is 5 square. And you know, 25. Again, what is the condition? You have to prime factors only. 4 and 50, uh, for 25 GCD. You know, 4 and 25 GC is 1 only. Okay. So, product of these two, I have expressed them in as 2 square into 5 square. A smaller number. Okay. 4 with 25 direct. But 1 by m, 1 by n. So, the same power. So, 2 square into 5 square. Okay. Now, put that in the formula. So, what happens now? In this formula, 2 square into 5 square into 1 minus 1 by 2 m is 2 n is 5 okay then what happens this one is 100 okay 5 of m nothing but this is this whole number 5 of 100 into 1 by 2 into 4 by 5 what is this this is equal to 40 so totion number of 100 is 40 this is how to calculate the totion number Now, next one, calculate totion number 240. So, multiplies of 240s are what? You can express 240 as 16 into 5 into 3. Okay, 16 can be expressed as again 2 raised to 4 into 5 into 3. Then, again same formula, 5 of 240 can be expressed as 5 of m into 5 of n, 1 minus 1 by m into 1 minus 1 by n. Now, 240 is 2 raised to 4 into 5 into 3. So, if n raised to m is not a prime number, then we use n raised to m minus n raised to n m minus 1. Now, what is what is the condition? We have to express it as a prime factorization. But 5 and 3 are primes, but 2 is not a prime number. Uh, 2 raised to 4 is not a prime number. Okay. It is a 16. Okay. It is a composite number. In such case, what we have to do? We use n raised to m minus n raised to m minus 1 form. So, when you use this form, what happens? n raised to m minus n raised to m minus 1. Another 2 raised to 4 is your n, n raised to m. So, it can be written as 2 raised to 4 minus 2 raised to 4 minus 1. Okay. It can be written as 2 raised to 4 minus 2 raised to 4 minus 1 into again 5, 5 raised to 1, 5 minus 5 raised to 1 minus 1, 3, 3 raised to n and 3 raised to m is 1. So, 3 raised to 1 minus 3 raised to 1 minus 1. So, what happens 2 raised to 4 as it is minus 2 raised to 3 into 5 raised to 1 is 5, 5 raised to 0 is 1, again 3 raised to 3 minus 1, okay. So, what happens 2 raised to 4 minus 2 raised to 3 is, uh, 2 raised to 4 is 16 minus 8 into 5 into 3, ultimately you will get it as 
64. So, 5 of 240. The restoration number of 240 is 64. Now, check 5 of 49. 5 of 49 is again 5 of n into 5 of n. 1 minus 1 by m into 1 minus 1 by n. This is the formula. So, composite number. But you can express it as a prime factors. That is 7 into 7. 5 of 7 into 5 of 7. You can directly use the form that is uh, whenever your n is prime then the totient number is less than n minus 1 okay whenever your n is prime n is prime totient number is always n minus 1 use that property then you directly you can write it here 6 minus 2 6 or else the formula we are going to use the formula 7 raised to 1 minus 7 raised to 1 minus 1. That is the previous formula only. Directly you can do this only without these two steps because these are prime numbers. 6 to 6 is 36. This is totient of 5 of 49. That is the totient of 49. Okay. This is how to compute the totient number of a given numbers. This is useful. Uh, we must know this totient number to study the Euler's theorem as well as RSE algorithm also. Okay. So, applications. Why we need to study this torsion function? Because it has a very uh, various applications. One may use this function to define the RSA encryption system used for internet security, security encryption. As already told you, to study RSA algorithm, we need uh, this torsion function. Also, one may use it in prime numbers theory number theory it because it is with respect to prime numbers and positive integers it is very much helpful okay one may use it in large calculation also so whenever you need to calculate large number of value of a large positive integer then you can use quotient number and one may use it in application of elementary number theory also okay in number theory also you may use this so these are the uses of quotient number so once you know quotient number it is easy to study further Okay, in the next class, I am going to discuss about Euler's theorem and some examples of Euler's theorem. Okay, till we keep practicing and uh, thoroughly study this quotient number. In next class, I am discussing Euler's theorem. If you are not yet subscribed my channel, do subscribe and support. Till then, take care. Thank you.